Congressman and official spokesperson for the PBA, which is the Puerza ng Bayan Atleta, and presently the Assistant Majority Leader of the House of Representatives. I will, uh, how do I say this? That was a bit a lot, but uh, it's very close to our hearts. He was our groom before he became all of this, and I will take the initiative to say, I will call him not Congressman Nograles, but I'm going to call him Coco, as I've always, always called him. And this is one person that I never have enough time to chat with him. The minutes, the hours just fly by every time I'm talking to him. So with that being said, I warmly welcome to Drinks with Vita, Coco Nograles. Thank you for uh, allowing us to spend some time with you, Coco. Hi, Tita Rita. Thanks for inviting me. I brought um, my cup of tea to join okay. drink with you. So since it's daytime, we can't have anything alcoholic. I'm having coffee with you. I'm still thinking whether to have the Godiva, to add in a little Godiva or some Baileys, but I'll stick first to the regular coffee and you can... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after our conversation, that will turn into an Irish coffee. I look forward to that. Yes, dapat. <laughs> or in the afternoon, we'll get something maybe a little bit uh, heavier, a little bit stronger. I've had the pleasure of doing several events for you, and I'm very comfortable with talking to you and asking you about the general lay of the land, the situation, because you are in a position to at least give us your take on what's happening. Well, um, it's, good. it's funny that you mentioned that um, I got married under your watch and I've had uh, several family occasions with you and your team. And for that, you know, we've created a lot of memories together. And um, just for the information of everyone, I got married uh, with my lovely wife uh, back in 2011, January of 2011. And back then, I was uh, surprised to find out that the event industry, specifically the wedding industry, was an eight billion peso a year industry back then. And that already does not include, back then it doesn't even include the other events. So we're talking about events such as corporate launches um, and other events within the families and uh, our culture such as even burials, uh, whether you like it or not, that's actually an, an event. Um, and uh, and uh, we've done the corporations and, you know, concerts. And you can also include fundraising. Those are events. So um, before the COVID and the ECQ, I, I think it's easy to estimate that the events industry is what? A 20 billion peso a year industry. Would that be more or less accurate, Tita Rita? Now, with 20 billion peso a year, it's uh, primarily um, sales and services, and I think majority services. And the government was, um, siempre, collecting taxes from that. And uh, with the ECQ, one of the first industries that are most affected would be the events industries. In fact, to give you a, uh, I don't want to bore you uh, with, with data, but um, it's something that that could be interesting for you, I'll just share. The impact of the ECQ has affected 30 million um, daily wage and informal workers. So it's 30 million Filipinos without a job. For OFWs, there are 250,000 OFWs that were, that were also affected in the sense that they had to come back or those who were set to be deployed were no longer deployed. 
Um, for MSMEs, which is most of the suppliers of the event industries, we're looking at 1 million establishments and approximately 6 million workers for SMMEs. Non-essential services, so you're talking about um, uh, those that are not open during the ECQ, we're talking about additional 17 million workers who are affected and other critical industries that are affected. In tourism, 5.4 million workers, trade and manufacturing, 500,000 workers, aviation, that's 500,000 workers. Um, we still don't have the data for the land and sea transport industry on how many workers were affected by that. And an additional SM MSMEs, which I already mentioned earlier, of 6 million workers. All of that are subject to what Congress is trying to, um, to package right now called the um, uh, Economic uh, Stimulus Act. So we're trying to do a, an economic recovery uh, through uh, government spending to uh, start addressing all of these problems. And these are not dole outs like what we saw when ECQ started and then the poorest of the poor were given um, yeah. X amount of money and uh, emergency employment were given. We're talking about um, different kinds of of uh, subsidies and expenditures, from wage subsidies uh, to uh, reliefs to credit mediation and financing, um, changing monetary policies, assistance to tourism uh, to create the jobs and um, other government spending. But all of these, the so Congress- oh, I may interrupt, sorry. So with all of, I mean, does this, would this also be including, I don't know if you mentioned it, banking institutions like lessening on the you know payments of loans or their personal or business loans housing yes that, that that is part of the proposal in fact we're even looking at negative interest loans where um where where we just put money in subsidized by the government para babayaran na lang would be capital and this is for the msmes and um and, and even the housing and that but that would uh, directly um, affect people but um, all of these are still proposals uh, the these proposals come exclusively from the economic cluster of the House of Representatives I have advised various members of Congress to get in touch with our Senate counterparts to also find out what's their um, take on on the matter we're also talking to the executive whether the executive will support these studied proposals because this, the proposals coming from the house actually um, uh, uh, took multiple uh, economics uh, and developmental professors from various universities Ateneo, UP, La Salle, UANP, and UST and even practicing uh, bankers. So we really try to integrate a lot of the perspectives of different industries, taking into account many, um, many uh, sectors of society. The event industry is not, is not officially recognized by Congress as an industry per se because you guys are divided into, you're like a subcategory of multiple different industries because you get into the tourism sector because you bring business to the hotels. You get into the transportation sector because people fly in for destination stuff. And um, you need also to transport people from one place or another and other logistics. You also come into the MSMEs because a lot of the suppliers are also MSMEs. And, uh, and, and th this also includes the professionals. So we're talking about videographers, photographers, and, and, and all the such. So there's no real um, um, uh, uh, treatment as an event industry per se, but multiple industries are, um, which, which belong to the others. So, so we're not particularly sensitive as to the event industry is concerned, but the event industry is one way or another covered by the proposals in Congress. The biggest issue in these proposals is where will we get 
the money to fund these proposals. Aside from that is where will we, um, will we get the actual support that the um, national government and the Senate will support our proposals uh, on how to spend the money. And this is a matter of debate with Congress and the executive. But, we, but I guess the message that I'm trying to say is that we are aware that a lot of people are having a hard time. And myself, uh, looking at the event industry, you're one of the hardest hits. I mean, yes. I think um, it would be useful for you to understand uh, the general situation, as I mentioned. Um, let's talk about the GDP. It's the first time in 20 years that yeah. we have posted a negative GDP. Um, when we say negative GDP, that means our economy is shrinking instead of growing. And when an economy is shrinking instead of growing, that means that lesser people are spending and there is a chance that, um, that, that uh, people's um, savings are running out because they're, these savings are the ones that are being tapped. And those who don't have any savings to tap on, they are getting into debts. And with this, um, it is also a good barometer of how businesses are. Because in the events industries, you have two different clientele. You have the personal, personal clientele, and you also have the corporate clientele. Yeah. So the corporate clientele, there will be a lot of corporations that, are, that, will, uh, that have and will postpone um, product launches. As an example, um, uh, Ayala Land has already decided to not have any product launches in the whole of 2020. Whether the ECQ will be lifted earlier or later, they have already decided that there will be no product launches or real estate launches yeah. for Ayala Land. Um, just recently, uh, the Marco Polo Hotel has decided to cease operation. And in ceasing operation, I was talking to the employees who have already received their severance packages. I asked them if there's any word if Marco Polo will reopen next year or whatever. And they said that they have no clarity on the issue, whether it will reopen or what will happen. And Marco Polo, I suppose, is, 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 is um, you know, a, a big signal uh, to the tourism industry. I was talking to multiple owners of hotels, asking them how do they feel about the situation now? If ECQ is lifted and it will be downgraded to GCQ, um, will there be um, uh, a significant problem for them? Is that, a good, yeah. is that good news for them? And surprisingly, the hotels have told me that um, there is some bad news if ECQ is lifted. That's to my surprise. And the reason why there will be bad news if ECQ is lifted, then that means they will lose their one and only clientele now. Why? Because their current clientele of operating hotels right now, their current clientele are either um, call center workers or those who are stranded uh, or, or those corporate uh, accounts that need housing for their personnel. When ECQ is lifted, all of them will be gone. So they all go back to their own houses because it's now GCQ. Let's, let's get it straight. Huh? From ECQ, it will move to GCQ. So what happens under GCQ? Under GCQ, believe it or not, um, hotels will remain to be closed. So, oh. so, so the general idea that when you downgrade East, from ECQ to GCQ, that hotels will start getting new customers, then um, that means that um, we're thinking in the wrong idea. Uh, the, the, the downgrade from ECQ to GCQ means that the current clientele of the hotels will leave and they cannot take in new clientele. Yeah. So that, that's trouble for, for, for the hotels. Um, airlines right now, um, they're bleeding. Uh, they're bleeding so much. I think 
in the billions in a monthly basis for for because their planes are not flying and we know that in Europe multiple airlines have already closed and our current players don't uh, have not seen any um, clear bailout plan from the government to for 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 these airlines so uh, we are looking either the airlines will surrender multiple assets or the airlines will start um, to contract or they can close down. Or a more uh, genius idea is that the airlines might merge. So you, you might look at, you look at a merger of airlines just so uh, to, to say goodbye to, to the costs and, and, and consolidate their capitals and, and revenues. Basically, the common trend is this. There is a, um, there is a um, uh, uh, slowdown or a shutdown or a hibernation of business. Those who want to survive under these conditions must learn to adapt. And I have seen um, some companies that have adapted. And these are companies that, that have prepared. They, they call it a business contingency plan or BC, the BCP. Um, we have seen uh, service industries like photography that have shifted from physical photography to album creation. So they have, they have yeah. uh, instead of, of going on site, they go back to their old clients and say, hey, um, uh, we know that, that you need help in, in, in uh, making your mem memories look better. We have this service. So while they don't do the physical um, uh, photographs, they, they, they are very good at making albums and compilations. So they're utilizing that existing skill to, to do that. And, and uh, um, the, the, the event industry, the way that I look at the event industry, you're actually problem solvers and solution finders. That is your skill. That's, that's your basic yes. skill set. You've dealt with so many um, clients, uh, some of them eccentric, some of them absurd, some of them overbearing. And, and these terror clients of yours are the ones that really, uh, you know, uh, pushed you to the limit yeah. of, of, of how to be creative in finding the solutions, diba? And that yeah. is your basic survival skill under this time. My job, I suppose, is to lay down what what the situation is, so that you can plan. I think the event industry must adapt, the players must adapt and plan and find out exactly what, what you can do. That's exactly what I also advise the schools. Because under ECQ and GCQ, how will schools operate? With, with schools operating yeah. and not operating, there is a big chance that the schools cannot pay the sueldo of the teachers. There's a problem that schools will, Teachers. you know, especially mga preschool. Imagine preschool is not lecture. It is physical, physical guiding of, of students, yeah. teaching them how to zip, how to use a zipper, teaching them how to, uh, how to button, uh, big buttons and smaller buttons, their motor skills, and, and all of that. And so I'm asking them to adapt. They can start selling uh, materials and home kits for parents to start teaching their kids. So, so these, these are the things that, that people need to do. The sooner that our industry players and suppliers will realize that you must adapt and this is what we're working on, is the sooner you can give jobs back to your people, that you can yes. start your income stream again. You have Yep, you look at your range of products and services and what you can do. Now, um, before we got, um, before we started rolling the tape, uh, we were ah. talking about possible destination weddings, right? Correct. I'm going to bring that up. Yes, go. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. destination weddings, will it be possible? It is going to be possible in, I suppose, um, uh, as far as the, the transportation industry is concerned, when it's a GCQ, that means an area under a GCQ can travel to another area 
that is also under GCT. Take for example, if Clark, the nearest airport to Manila that is uh, commercial, um, if Clark will be under GCQ or is under GCQ, and then Cebu is under GCQ, then Clark and Cebu can fly vice versa. But if okay. Manila is under ECQ, then there are no flights there. Okay. Likewise, if Jensan, General Santos City, yes. uh, if it's under GCQ, then GCQ, uh, uh, Jensan and Clark can fly vice versa. Um, Palawan, ayan. If Palawan is under GCQ, if Aklan is under GCQ, then flights alone, pwede na yan. Transportation, pwede na yan. The question though would be um, mass gathering. Will mass gathering be permitted under GCQ? The answer is no. Mass gathering will not be allowed under GCQ. So what's going to happen? Will there will that stop weddings? Will that yeah. stop destination yeah. weddings? Yeah. Diba? And the answer is um, I don't think so because kahit papaano, people get married. And we know this. Yeah, we we know. have I I have friends who got married under ECQ. They go to the okay. church, and in the church, it's them, the two of them the priest, yeah. and a videographer, and a photographer. Wala man lamang yung parents of the groom and parents of the bride. Yeah. So what happened? The photographer and the videographer, sila yung pumirma na no witness dun sa, ano, sa uh, wedding uh, contract nila. And, pero natuloy ang wedding. They have beautiful photos. And then they shared the beautiful photos privately. They did not post it in social media. They sent it to their Viber group saying, hey, we, we tied the knot. And then when all is over, we will have a reception. Yes. So yeah. what does that mean? That means people still want to celebrate. People still want to talk about their milestones. But people also want to be saved. Yes. I mentioned the the destination wedding. So, destination wedding under ECQ, GCQ is probably possible na sobrang minimal just for documentation purposes. Correct. Now, yeah. may trabaho si videographer, may trabaho si uh, couturier, may trabaho si, ano, si uh, photographer, di ba? Uh, may, may trabaho si tailor, may trabaho si jewelry. Uh, the jeweler meron, pero walang trabaho yung, walang negosyo para sa pagkain, walang negosyo para sa hotel. Saka na yun. Diba? Saka na yun. How about yung, uh, yung event organizer? Eh, pag nandiyan na yung hotel, kailangan pa rin ng event organizer. Hindi naman yan na simpleng, ano eh, hindi naman yun yung simple na na magbook tayo ng ballroom. Diba? Nandun din si stylist, nandun na yun si lights and sounds. So, everybody will still have that business and everybody will still be fully booked. Yes. Pero after na, after na nitong lockdown. And uh, also, we, like we, uh, as a planner, ang dami namin ginagawa na rin na trabaho virtually to plan it. So, it, it's pretty good because like you were saying uh, that we have to adapt and everything. So really going online and virtual, it's the same with the other suppliers, but at least pinaplano na namin yon. yung execution na lang ang tinitweak namin so that we can adapt to the situation. Yeah, Just uh, yeah like, because that's, that's the most you can do at the moment. Booking the, the moment. suppliers for future, for future work. Although hindi ko na alam kung kaya ninyong sumingil ng mga deposits. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. Yeah, kaya. Diba? Well, you know, online banking and everything. Yeah, payments. So it's, not, it's not it's not that. It's like convincing the client to oh. to send the deposit. Kayo na 'yon. Yo, matter of negotiation. Yeah. yeah. And then yung mga rates na 'yan. Ang yeah. pinakakawawa talaga is Papaano habang walang cash flow to sustain yung mga tao ninyo? Yes. I, I don't have an answer to that question. I myself, um, 
our family we we have been running uh, uh, a small hotel on, on my father's side uh, yeah. and, uh, and also a bed and breakfast on my mother's side and ano talaga bunot lang talaga kami hanggang sa makaya and uh, we, that that's ano that's and and yung mga obligations namin bayad pa rin and and wala hirap talaga and we can't even touch yung allocation for payment of taxes because uh, that's that's due to the government the moment i touch that kakasuhan ako ng gobyerno so 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 we are all on the same boat uh, that's 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 the sad reality at the moment um but will we recover um yes we will recover when if and when all of these will be lifted these celebrations will take time kasi syempre meron ding um, psychological impact yan sa maraming tao na ayaw nilang ituloy dahil baka may sakit pa yung mga ganyan but um, i think the events industry uh, will recover faster than other industries um, because because ano eh you can't you can't stop somebody celebrating their 50th Kaya it's, yeah. ba, you can't stop, this one, you can't stop people throwing a memorial for those they have lost during the ECQ, for the friends who have not um, uh, been able to send their condolences, yung mga hindi kayang mag-wake. Yeah. Um, and, and I know that wedding organizers and funeral organizers are not really supposed to mix because of whatever but uh, some some superstitious belief in some cultures but um, yeah that's what I see I see that um, yung mga postponed na gatherings na yan are, are, will, will be necessary for a lot of people to deal with their grieving to deal with their celebrations um, I, I know everything's up in the air and it's a wait and see is it what is the timeline we're talking about because we're often asked, people are moving dates of their events. So, I mean, like, I, I, we don't have a crystal ball. I don't have one. Is it safe to say, or is it all right to say, na, uh, make it mid next year? Or are we just talking if there's a vaccine? If there's no vaccine, forget it. It's a very difficult um, question to answer. But um, okay. we have to break it down. On the vaccine side, um, definitely if there's a vaccine, an effective and safe vaccine, then the world can go back to normal. Okay. And all pharmaceutical industries that are doing research on this one, they're on full steam on this vaccine. Some have been working on it for many years um, yeah. and some are just starting. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine inside. So, the road to normalization will not be soon. That is for sure. Um, in the Philippine setting, the ECQ or the lockdowns are utilized to flatten the curve. Correct. Have we flattened the curve? My answer to that is no. We have not flattened the curve. Regardless of what people say on the news that yeah, hey, we flattened the curve, or I, I'll 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 admit that it was effective in um, in addressing the uh, issue on overwhelming our hospitals. Yes. Because currently our hospitals are not overwhelmed, but lifting the ECQ, we don't know the effect if that will overwhelm our hospitals because we, we are still on a positive, uh, uh, we're still increasing cases on a daily basis. And I think we've, we haven't even tested 200,000 Filipinos. Juxtapose that to the 110 million Filipinos that need to be tested um, in order to map things out. So the ECQ, served its purpose in not overwhelming the hospitals. However, I do not see the government um, expanding in an efficient manner 
the number of beds in medical facilities, not just hospitals, to address the um, upsurge of cases. You say, let's not kid ourselves. When you downgrade from, GC, from ECQ to GCQ, we will increase the number of COVID-19 patients. And when we increase the number of COVID-19 patients, the next question is, is our um, medical facilities, are, are our medical facilities ready to, to take in the sudden surge? And I don't think so because we have not added beds in our medical facilities, even down to the barangay. You know, PPEs are still a problem. Um, so uh, we don't know what happens. We know that ECQ will be down downgraded to GCQ, and we don't know whether the cases, how big, how much bigger the cases will be, or how much more we will have, and what will happen to the, you know, because it's also possible that from, from ECQ, we downgrade to GCQ, and then things go for the worse, we go back to ECQ. So, um, uh, baka, baka hibernate is the best option at the moment. Um, adapt. Try to find uh, a way to, to have uh, an income stream to, ano, to sustain or help your people and yourself, obviously. Yung kami, sa hotels nga namin, um, we have closed all our hotels because that's the, you know, that's, that was the, the situation. And we, we, we have three, eh? we have three hotels. Eh? So we have, we have closed it in our family. But lately, we're thinking, what if we offer it for, we will repurpose it for housing. So even us, we're thinking about adapting para lang may cash flow. So instead of a short-term stay in a hotel, we will or medium-term stay in a hotel, we might make it into uh, a condo hotel uh, na to compete with, ano, with, with others para lang may cash flow. So um, that kind of business decisions should really be contemplated. Um, if, if, again, no, going back to your original question, Will will there be events under GCQ? No, there won't be events under GCQ. So all all the event industry is really waiting for is when the government uh, will lift the cancellation of mass gatherings, yeah. and then you can have events again. And uh, I, we don't foresee that happening really soon. I will speak. Uh, for myself and what I see and what I've researched and I I think um, it's not going to happen at least until I don't know um, October or onwards but I don't I don't see it happening June I don't see events happening like that so you know like I mentioned you know I, Ayala Corp and uh, declared already to the public uh, about a month ago that they will not have any lunches until next year. And a lot of other corporations have also postponed their lunches. So um, that's the idea. And if you listen to um, other corporations with their, uh, what, what, they, what they're doing under the ECQ is they've already adapted and focused uh, on different products, abandoning some products, production of other products, and then focusing on what is essential. So for our service industries, um, uh, yun na nga, service industries is, is most, ano, most hit talaga. And the event industry is a service industry. It really is a service-driven industry. But um, this is where you try to be creative na talaga. Um, before we end this session, um, Ko, I'd just like to know because like uh, we as a planner had already scheduled before this whole thing happened, uh, several destination weddings abroad, specifically Italy and we also have some in the States. Um, right now we're really planning for like second uh, quarter of next year. The, because the problem really is the traveling, no? even if let's say Italy or France opens up, will we be able to travel there? What, what do you think? Well, um... 
if I were in your situation, um, I'd like to wish that that would push through, but it but prudence dictates that you must have a plan B, plan C. If okay. if what the client uh, should also decide on that one. What if? Because yeah. if I were the client as well, I would say now, oh, what if hindi na talaga kaya ang Italy? Shall I postpone the event or shall I move the event domestically? Yes. Diba? Ako, personally, as a Filipino, and having the economy hit so hard, I'd like to do all my events within the Philippines to help Philippine industries um, move up. But, you know, if they want Italy, if they want... Uh, you know, Greece. Yeah. It's, 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 it's entirely up to them. And uh, I guess um, a, a word from the wise, siguro. Uh, we all know that planning um, international destination weddings is uh, way, 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 way more difficult than planning domestic. So under the current situation, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse worse that, that that level of planning is going to be very difficult and of course um, yung mga services doon will also ask for down payment etc um siguraduhin lang ninyo na uh, kung magka problema mababawi whatever down payment na yan and all these risks are are known not just to the client but to the supplier also because the supplier also needs to know what they're offering the client. Eh, syempre, ano kayo eh, solution providers kayo eh. Hindi naman, hindi nyo naman susubo yung kliyente sa, um, sa problema. So, uh, I guess under this situation, the uh, communicating the risks and anticipating the problems will, yeah. will be something that any client will um, will appreciate, and um, and perhaps it's a fine time to review the you know the um, the contracts, the standard contracts that you have, yeah. um, uh, instead of debating whether uh, a medical uh, pandemic or situation is force majeure or not, because that's still up for debate. It would be better that you generally mention that any uh, cessation brought by unforeseen cessation of businesses brought about by the government or extraneous circumstances uh, should be already part of your standard contracts. Para black and white with the customer. I yeah. think the biggest one of the bigger problems that hit the event industry was when the lockdown happened. Papaano ba? Is it a full refund? A partial refund? Is it a uh, a credit for services for future services so so all of these kailangan lang i-anticipate and um, the best tip is be be prepared and let your and manage the expectations of your client and all the complications that may or may not happen and that being said thank you very much for clarifying that issue because these are really major concerns and yes definitely we should not just stop at plan B. I think like what you said, a plan C and then plan B because uh, it's also very hard to keep on going back to the venue, to the supplier and say, oh, I don't think it's going to work out if it's for next year. Can you extend again? So, Sana, you know, not so much movement but then this is some extension at them or just at least two with a backup extension. I mean, that's my take also. That. Now, um, Ko, please, uh, Please, I would like you to uh, ask you to please give just a, a message, which I normally uh, ask of all our speakers, of all our guests, okay? And right now, I'm telling you already, I'm looking forward to getting you back here, maybe after, you know, the lockdown or even when issues come up, because you know, you're really such a good resource person. So please honor us again with another visit. Uh, but before that, please your message. Thanks again for having me. Uh, it's a real honor to spend time and a pleasure to see you again, um, uh, even if it's online. Um, I guess the tip, the final tip or the final message I'd like to give the event industry players and all the suppliers is that um, 
business right now is on hibernation. Uh, if you want it to continue one way or another, you must adapt to what is needed in the times. Otherwise, you must plan to hibernate because after all of this is over, people would want to re-engage. Uh, you cannot stop the human spirit from celebrating uh, life uh, and, and, and everything. So um, it's just uh, bad timing now. But, and, you know, it can only get better for me. Thank you so much. I really like that you cannot stop the human spirit. Uh, because that's what it's all about. Uh, celebrations and spending special moments will not stop. With that, go enjoy your tea and we will enjoy our coffee. We look forward to more times spent with you, whether virtual or actual. Thank you very much, Congressman Jerry Coco Nogales. Thank you. Thank you.